Would everyone please turn off cell phones and electronic devices? And would everyone please stand for a moment of silence and the pledge to the flag? And please remember for, former Orange County Parks Commissioner Gramsci and two members of the Sheriff's Office, Officer Alex Elia and Lieutenant Frank Mayorino. Anastakis? Present. Benton? Here. Cheney? Here. Fagione? Here. Hines? Here. Pulisic? Here. Luhan? Present. Minuta? Here. O'Donnell? Here. Miscavige? Here. Sassy? Here. Sierra? Here. Stiganga? Here. Sutherland? Here. Tortel? Here. Tui? Here. Vero? Here. Brescia? Here. Anyone present? Okay, first up we'll have a recognition award, a proclamation recognizing October 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I would ask Pamela O'Day, Collaborative Programs Director, to come to the front. destroys an individual's privacy, dignity, security, and humanity due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse. I'm going to read the whole thing. Okay. <laughs> Whereas in 2017, Safe Homes answered 3,166 hotline calls, sheltered 66 adults and 45 children, provided 5,322 bed nights in emergency shelter service an emergency shelter, excuse me, served 741 non-residential clients and 543 non-residential children, provided 18,800 or 383 advocacy services. Safe Homes advocated, advocates provided 70 advocates, really doing well, 7,326 supportive counseling services to individual victims and survivors, creating 3,165 individualized safety plans. Safe Homes Community Educator provided 131 presentations, reached 1,741 adults, raising awareness about the dynamics and important impact of intimate partner violence. Safe Homes Two Youth Educators provided 264 age-appropriate workshops, reached 4,561 adolescents and teens, raising awareness on abusive versus healthy relationships physical and online bullying systems of oppression and cultural competency. Safe Homes of Orange County displayed the clothesline project, which you saw earlier in the week out front, project all around the county and continued to raise awareness and acknowledge the deaths of women throughout our county at the hands of their intimate partners. <coughs> Whereas nearly 4 million American women are victims of abuse each year and 42% of women murdered in the United States are killed by their intimate partners, and four women per day are murdered by their husband, boyfriend, and ex-boyfriend. One woman in every 15 seconds is assaulted by their intimate partner. Furthermore, since September of 2004, 24 women were murdered in Orange County as a result of domestic violence. Their names are Amelia King, Suzanne Timoney, Vicky Godinez, Zhao Hang, Marcelina Gonzalez, Griselda Epinel, Elena Heilberger, Ramin Nunez, Nunez, Gloria Rivera Melina, Anna Taft Florence Benson, Iria Kochari, Deborah Nieves, Nieves, Remy Jesselito, Kathleen Connolly, 
Alexis Harris, Sandra Oliva, Tyrochelle Houghton, Sabine Eichart, Ada Lura, Ada Lara, Deanne Nimbino, Leroy, and Junka Salters, Marianne Giannoni, Tanya Smith, and one woman, Petra Mohammed, is currently missing. And whereas child abuse is 15 times more likely to occur in families where domestic violence is present, and more than 3 million children nationwide are at risk of exposure to parental violence each year. And whereas the National Crime Survey found that the domestic violence has a direct bearing on productivity, effectiveness, absenteeism, and employee turnover in the workplace. And it is estimated that 175,000 days per year are missed from paid work due to violence, domestic violence, which costs an estimated $3 billion per year. Whereas this legislature recognizes that domestic violence is a major community health issue to our citizenry. And whereas the Safe Homes of Orange County and their Family Justice Center provide one-stop, co-located wraparound services for victims of violence and their children, offer hope and assistance for all members of families torn by domestic violence, as well as prevention and education activities in our community. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Orange County Legislature hereby recognizes the invaluable work performed by the Safe Homes of Orange County for the prevention of domestic violence and designates October 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Given this fourth day of October 2018, L. Stephen Brescia, Chairman of the Legislature, Stefan Newhouse, Orange County Executive. It was lengthy, but I needed to read it all, I think, because it's, it, there's a lot of facts in here, and, and you know, we salute you for all you guys do to put out awareness and, and fight this uh, terrible scourge in our society. Uh, so just uh, on behalf of Safe Homes and our executive director, Kellyanne Costellaria, was unable to be here tonight due to a scheduling conflict. We would just like to thank the Orange County legislators for your continuous um, solidarity and support with our work and with survivors. Um, it's powerful to read the names of the women who have lost their lives here in Orange County to, to domestic violence homicide. Um, and however, that the county legislator built their names into the proclamation, proclamation allows us to remind, reminds us all that we will never forget the reason why we do this work. And we just thank you for standing with us and your commitment to help us making sure all survivors find pathways to safety, equality, and, adjust, and justice. So we thank you all so much for your support this month and beyond. So thank you. Thank you. Okay, we've got three speakers to speak beforehand, but I will note that the um, resolution on the salary raises, with the exception of the sheriff, are going to be pulled, but these three speakers want to speak anyway. So the first speaker is Marianne McDonough uh, on the raises. Hi, I'm Marianne McDonough. I'm speaking on the raises. Raises, percentages, dollars, and all such important words in today's world in our economy. Yes, even our Orange County economy. Let's take a walk down memory lane. To any of you longtime legislators, do you have a recollection of the following dates and percentages? 2012, 0%. 2013, 0%. 2014, 60 cents plus to the hourly wage. 2015, 1.75%. 2016, 1.5%. 2017, 1.5%. 2018, 1.25%. You see, those were the raises that the legislature and the previous county executive, Diana, and the current county executive, Newhouse, approved for the hardworking CSEA employees of Orange County. Let me preface my next remarks by saying it's nothing personal, it's purely economic. The Times Herald Record article of December 3rd, 2015 said that the former legislature voted 13 to 8 to raise Sheriff Carl Du Bois' salary $21,000 after overturning a three-year pay freeze that was set for the sheriff and for all others that was imposed on themselves by the elected officials. They actually bypassed a law that was to keep salary increases from increasing till 2018. So, 120,000 was the amount Mr. Du Bois was making, 
and January of, of excuse me, December of 2015, he increased 14,000 in January of 2016 to a salary of 134,000. In January of 2017, he went to 141,000. So from December of 2015 to January of 2017, $21,000 increase. Some Orange County employees barely make much more than that for a yearly income. And now a Times Herald record order by Chris McKenna indicating the Du Bois salary for June of 2019 would increase $11,000 to $152,000. So Du Bois went from $152,000 in December of 15 to $120,000 in December of 15 to $152,000 in January of 19, a 32,000 increase just over three years. But according to the record article, it does not stop there. No specific numbers were given. The only specific number given was reaching $168,000 in 2022. To get to 152 to 168 in three years, all was the paper said, he would get higher levels for each of the next three years. So taxpayers, you have it. Sheriff Du Bois, according to the Orange County Legislature, from December 2015 to January 2022, a mere six years, will see a salary jump from 120,000 to 168,000. That's $48,000 increase is definitely more than many county employees make for the year. While the Orange County Union employees have been relegated to be between zero and 1.75% since 2012, if this legislative body passes yet another unfair raise for the sheriff, his salary would have risen 40% from 120,000 in 2015 to 168,000 in 2022. Why is one employee worth a 40% increase when thousands of others are not even seeing any increase or a maximum of 1.75%? Outrage, I say. That is what the taxpayers of Orange County are experiencing, especially when Chris McKenna reported in the Times Herald record the same week that these raise issues came up, that the 2019 county budget of 798.4 million will rise county taxpayers in Thank 20 you. Next 26. speaker, please, Virginia Scott, regarding- I like raise. it that you don't let me finish. Say thank, no thank to- Thank you. Say you know no, the rules better than anyone, Mary Ann no McDonough. To this raise. Thank you, Mary Ann McDonough. Please don't go on or I'll have to ask you to leave. Just go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I'm Virginia Scott. Um, I live in Cornwall, and um, I did attend the uh, committee meeting, the emergency committee meeting on Monday, and I was sadly disappointed in what I was hearing. You're very out of touch with what's going on in this county. I can tell you personally, I've had zero for five years, and with health insurance, negative. So I heard all this, we deserve it, we're gonna diminish the position. My understanding of the history of the legislature, it wasn't a career, it was for people in the community to serve. And I want you to keep that in mind. And I just wanna real quick, I do wanna give a cheers to Chris McKenna because I really felt he brought this issue to light and, and to people to know about it. We're all working hard, these committee meetings are very hard to come to. The minutes are not timely being posted, so you really don't know. So when you attend these meetings, you really don't know the background and what each of the legislators had said about it. My second chair goes to Legislator Tautel. Um, she was the sole um, member and she did um, discourage the approval. And one of the things that she said that really caught me is that when she was running for office, she didn't know the salary of the legislature. Her wish was to serve our communities in our county. And again, the amount of time, I know it's a lot of time, but that's what we, you, know, you signed up for. Um, I will also compliment Ms. Uh, Legislator Benelli. Um, I do believe there should be some more extensive research. I do think that there should be a look at how you could increase the wages of legislature, but I really think the timing was totally inappropriate. Um, Gears, um, the only thing I have to say um, about the, the increases, here's the last thing. I said, an observer in a special meeting, I wanted to share how, in my view, how disconnected the reality to reality our elected officials are. Times are good. For who? Not being able to attract quality candidates? Aren't you qualified when you were elected? You are. You were voted for. The idea is spending because there's this false sense the economy is improving is irresponsible. What I found interesting is there's money in the budget to increase the county share of salary, but come again, there's gonna be a grant from the NRA to provide bullets for training. 
you remember that. You all voted for it right after the Parkland shooting. I did not forget it, not all of you, but the majority. I'll watch that next vote because that meant a lot to me. I'm a teacher and the fact that you aren't doing things and maybe selling some of us out, what, for $4,000, I, I just have a very difficult time understanding that. Please do better. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Ovid Figueroa Jr., Middletown, regarding the raises. Thank you. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak today. Um, I'd like to thank the legislature and O'Donnell, Mr. O'Donnell for coming out to the um, CPV comment period as well. Um, you know, one of the things that we um, look at with the raises, I'm hoping that this is not a situation similar to when we had the pay to play legislation where we shelled it and then brought it up in a slow session when people are not around so we can push a vote through and make it look good and then pull it out later. Uh, but one of the things that, you know, really stuck out to me was that it, it, times are good. Well, times look pretty good when one of the, the big concerns I have is the number of unfunded jo or unfilled jobs that are being funded with no intention of funding them, with overworked staff, and that money goes right back into the budget, and times look really good. But they're not as good as they really are, and I think the first thing we should do before anybody considers raises is start cleaning that mess up so that way we can actually have a clear budget, not dump that money back in the bank so it sounds like it's much better than it is before anybody considers a raise. Because that's a big thing, because that's really money that should be going back to the people and their tax dollars. If I ran my business charging my customers for a service I did not provide, that would be called theft. So I think first let's clean this mess up here before anybody considers taking anything more. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. And before we start the meeting, I'd like to thank Lucy Joyce and Cornell Cooperative Extension for the fantastic dinner downstairs. Uh, the teacher and I showed up. We were, we're a little tardy, but we had an earlier event. So, but. We enjoyed it, and uh, I'm glad that I asked it to be brought back. I wish we could do it in the courtyard, but I guess we can't. But Lucy, that was fantastic, the best ever. I want to repeat next year. Chairman or not, I want to repeat. That, that, was, that was great. Thank your staff and your everybody else too, please. And the board of directors for coming as well. And I'd like to recognize former chairman of the legislature, Mike Pillmeyer, out in the audience. Chairman, good to see you again. We have former legislator Noel Spencer out there. I believe he's on the board as well. And Paul Johnson, who's on our board of ethics, was downstairs. And he's on the board of Cornell as well. Is he out there? No. Uh, but we also have Doug Bloomfield, supervisor of Town of Goshen, with us tonight. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. OK, we ready to start? Oh, no, we've got a couple of bookkeeping things here, housekeeping, rather. Okay, are there any referrals, withdrawals, or consents? Yes, uh, Majority Leader Benelli. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, in light of the uh, discussion that occurred at the Rules Committee meeting and in the aftermath, there was much discussion with leadership as well as fellow legislators and with staff. And I want to thank you for, as a result of those discussions, called the joint meeting of the Personnel and Compensation Committee as well as the Rules Committee wherein we had a very, very thorough discussion. And at this point, I would respectfully request that items number three through nine on the agenda, which are local laws um, amending previous local laws, fixing the compensation of the following positions, county clerk, county executive, chairperson of the Orange County Legislature, majority and minority leaders, party leader other than the majority and minority leaders, chairpersons of the statutory committee, and the legislators of the Orange County Legislature. I request that they be here. Okay, second, Mr. Second. Okay. I'd like to second, like, make a comment, Mr. Chairman, if you allow me to. Um, I'm disappointed that we're withdrawing these. I think we had a lot of discussion, and a lot of discussion went on over the years about why it's important uh, to compensate elected officials. I think you said it correctly when you said, in fact, no time is a good time to ask for a raise. And I think that that is a problem we have to kind of get around. But I think it's important after five years of, I think four or five years of zero increases for county employees, legislators, uh, that it's time to kind of look at a fair way to do it. I think if we don't do it, we give, a diff we give the wrong message to the people of the county about the value of being a county legislator. 
And it also may deter some folks who may want to run for legislature because they can't afford it if it continues uh, at, at a lower rate. So all in all, as my second, one of the things I'd like to ask you, Mr. Chairman, is that I hope you will take action to try to bring together a group of people to think about a way to more rationally look at compensation for the, the people in the legislature and the elected officials in the county uh, so that we don't go into a battle about, against, uh, about this in the future. That we somehow find it's a fair way to do it and it's a way it should be done, whatever the amount is. And I know you struggled with it. We came up with one idea and then what it looked like we needed to adjust it, you tried to adjust it and then we adjusted it again and it stopped. <coughs> Let's find a way that we can uh, find a way that we can all agree on, uh, and find a way that we can all get what we want out of this. Um, the interest we're looking for. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. If there are no objections to the withdrawal of those items, um, so be it. Three nine. What's that? Three through, Three through nine. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, we're not going to speak to this, Kathy. But which, oh. oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Legislator Stiganga. Um, I'd like to request to um, item number 22 on the agenda, resolutions of the Orange County Legislator, Legislature, giving notice of intent to assume lead agency status under State Environmental Quality Review Act, CECRA, with respect to the construction of the Orange County Tactical Training Range 2, making a preliminary determination that this project be classified as an unlisted action, be withdrawn. Okay, so we're, we're doing lead agency instead of notice of intent? Okay, all right, so. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be done as well. Okay, number one, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, Legislator Bent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I request that item number 20 on the agenda, amending bond resolution dated October 4, 2018, amending the bond resolution adopted July 1, 2010, in relation to computer hardware at the Valley View Center be withdrawn. Second. Okay, if there are no objections, that'll be withdrawn. We're gonna use cash instead, that's the, the rationale? Correct. Okay. okay. Great. Okay, we're on number one, I guess. Our 1A sir, our receiving file, 1A local law, introductory 10. Legislators Fagione, Stiganga, Bureau, and Hines. Local law introductory number 10 of 2018. A local law amending local law number one of 2016 and fixing the compensation for the sheriff of Orange County pursuant to section 201 of the New York State County Law. Discussion? Okay, roll, uh, roll call. Yes, Legislator Ben. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Well, I guess if nobody else wants to speak, I will. Um, this is basically deja vu all over again, except worse this time. It's amazing to me how this legislature sometimes doesn't learn from its mistakes. Four years ago, the sheriff came to us, and it was four years in a row of zeros. Uh, and then, like Marianne said, somehow uh, it was brought back to us because it was, you know, quote, left up to negotiation. But, and he got his raises over the last three years. But four years ago, uh, I'm almost positive that, it, again, the sheriff came to the committee for personnel and compensation uh, after petitions had started. This year is even worse. Petitions have closed in July, and now it's November. And this is just completely unacceptable. This should have been done somewhere between January and May so that the voters had a chance to decide who's sheriff, who gets what. Um, this is one time I disagree with uh, the time show record because obviously the voters had no chance to speak on this whatsoever this year because it's done after the candidates and after petitions are filed and everything is settled. So um, again, um, I'm going to vote no on like this like I did four years ago, or three years ago. Um, but it's just totally inappropriately how this was handled this year. I will say, um, with, with respect to uh, Speaker One's comments, that I received a letter from CSEA Local 836 Unit 7900-12. Please allow this correspondence to serve as a letter of support for the proposed salary increase for Sheriff Carly Du Bois, 
The Superior Officers Association fully supports the proposed salary increase that is needed to place management in line with current collective bargaining agreements within our agency. Thank you for your time and anticipated support of this proposal. So CSEA did support this, and I support it. I, um, I think we all got a lot of, the, uh, the timing could have been a little better, could have been done a few months ago. I won't disagree with that. But nonetheless, we have a sheriff's office with more accreditations than any sheriff's office in the state of New York. We bring in an ICE money, and the sheriff was uh, one of the impetus involved with bringing that ICE money to the county of Orange, which helps balance the budget, whether you believe it or not. It, it's a lot of money for Orange County, and it's, it's the law that creates that. So I will say, we all, most of us have gotten a comparison of police chiefs throughout the county, and the sheriff was below quite a few of those salaries. And the sheriff is the number one law enforcement in, in Orange County. Number one law enforcement. And aside from the fact that he's done a fantastic job in his position, aside from that fact, for the position alone warrants the salary, you know, above the under, the, the uh, captains and lieutenants and under sheriffs. So you can argue all you want, and uh, we can talk about CSEA, but we don't, you know, I have a letter from CSEA supporting this. Okay, who had their hand up over here? Somebody on this row first, uh, Legislator Hines, and then Legislator Sierra, and then Tuttle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with everything you just said. I just wanted to add a few uh, other issues. Certainly not the sheriff's fault that this isn't being addressed uh, until now. If uh, it should have been done sooner, so be it. But that's not the fault of the sheriff's or, or the sheriff's office. Everybody knows we uh, fixed a, a whole problem with respect to the command staff in the sheriff's office. Everybody is in line with respect to uh, management. And what we couldn't do, everybody has to remember, we couldn't promote captains to jail administrator because they would have to take a $40,000 pay cut. So what we did is restructure the department so that the individuals employed in the sheriff's command can actually be promoted to different levels of management. It's done a, a tremendous job because I think it's certainly increased the morale in the sheriff's office when people realize they can start their career and move through the process and eventually become uh, the, the administrator and, and, and promotions, things like that, because prior to that, we used to have to go to the outside and find someone who worked in the state system and come in and run the jail. Uh, and isn't it proper that the uh, boss gets more than the subordinates? That's how America works. Uh, so I totally support this. Sheriff, I thank you for the job you do. Uh, the school safety program uh, has been wonderful. We have, uh, in my town in Cornwall, there's sheriffs in all the schools now. And that's because the sheriff and the undersheriff put that program together. The school district in Cornwall uh, latched right onto it and thought it was great. And I know a lot of other schools have done it and more schools are going to do it. Uh, if we think about the insurance savings uh, because of all the accreditations, uh, the, the office is just is, is running really great right now. And, and then you look at the management responsibility, there's more than 300 staff, uh, both sworn and, and unsworn. And uh, it's just, uh, just, just doing great. So uh, I support this raise. Again, I agree with the chairman. Uh, it's just in the town I live in, the police chief is paid well in excess of $100,000, and I think there might be 10 full-time officers and a few part-time officers. I know I, uh, before this meeting at, at Cornell Cooperative Extension, I spoke to one of the uh, city aldermen in Middletown, and, and he told me that his police chief makes, I think he said a number higher than 225, but he, he didn't know it off the top of his head. And I think he said he has maybe 60 officers in the command there. So it's a big responsibility, and the compensation is in tune with the responsibility. So I hope everybody supports it. I think that was the retired chief. The new chief makes a little less than 200000 I think. But Joel is going to correct us. 188, Joel Sierra, legislator. Thank you, Chairman. I, I did want to agree with your statement. Um, and Legislator Hines, um, I come from Middletown. We believe in paying your talent, paying them well. Um, I did look at the analysis that was given to us from the Chiefs Associations throughout Orange County. Um, this position is actually lower than several of the police chiefs in Orange County. And they all have a department a fraction of the size of the sheriff's office. Um, that being said, um, you know, if someone planned on running for office, they did have time to run for office um, and file their positions at whatever the salary was at the time. But I know the timing could have been handled much better, but I do support this. There's a huge responsibility in that office. They're doing a great job. Um, and like you said, these gentlemen are risking their lives every day to put their uniform on. Not only the sheriff, but all his staff. So I will be supporting this. Resolution. 
Thank you, Legislator Tittle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, having not previously had been able to see that CIC letter, could you tell us who signed that letter, please? Because you neglected that part. It was an email, was it not? Oh, uh, email. email. Okay, from Lawrence Cataletti, Treasurer, Superior's o Officers Association. Say that again. Lawrence Cataletti, Treasurer, Superior Officers Association. That's a recognized unit of the CSEA as well. Are you going to make a statement too? Or no? Okay. All right, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Duke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Benanistakis? Benton? No. Cheney? Yes. Fagione? Yes. Hines? Yes. Kulisek? Yes. Lujan? No. Menuda? Yes. O'Donnell? Yes. Miscavige? Yes. Sassy? Yes. Sierra? Aye. Stiganga? Yes. Sutherland? Yes. Totel? No. Tui? Hero? Yes. Russia? Yes. 17 eyes, four no's. Okay, 2A, receive and file. Um, number two, local law introductory number nine. Legislators Hines and Paduke, local law introductory number nine of 2018, a local law entitled Orange County Ethics and Disclosure Law. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagion, Hines, Pulisek, Luhan, Aye. Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, and Brescia, 21 eyes. Kelly, you have the wrong sheet now. Three is withdrawn, correct? Three through nine, right, okay. I didn't, okay. Okay, number 10. Legislators Paduca Manelli. Resolution authorizing the county executive to enter into an easement agreement and authorize the granting of a utility easement in, on, under, and over a parcel of real property owned by County of Orange. Second. Discussion? Yes. All Dems, okay. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduca? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagion? Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Aye. Menuda, O'Donnell, Miscavige, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 11. Legislators Benelli Menton. Resolution authorizing the county executive to enter into an easement agreement and authorize the granting of a utility easement in, on, under, and over a parcel of real property owned by County of Orange. Discussion? All Dems. All Dems. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Biro, and Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 12, bond re resolution requiring two thirds vote. Amending bond resolution dated October 4th, 2018, amending the bond resolution adopted March 1, 2018, in relation to drainage improvements. Discussion? Roll call. You want to be added? Okay, so tell them added. Benelli? Yes. And Lu Luan wants to be added too. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nanasakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 13. Legislators Tui, Priscavich, Benton, Hines, and Sutherland. 
Resolution authorizing Orange County Commissioner of Public Works to contract with certain towns and villages for snow and ice control on certain county roads pursuant to section 135A of highway law. Uh, Fashion wants to be added or do you want to speak? Fashion added, Bureau added, Stagenga added. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nedisakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagion? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Miskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stagenga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Bureau? Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 14. Legislators Vero, Paduke, Benton, and Kulisek. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Public Works Airport to accept grant funds from the New York State Department of Transportation pursuant to Section 99-H of the municipal, General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Yes, Luhan added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Emma? Yes. Nandestakis? Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Luhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stigenga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Bureau, Brescia, 21 eyes. And there were 15. Legislators Benton, Benelli. Resolution authorizing the county. Orange County Water Authority to transfer unspent funds from capital project number 138 back to the Water Authority pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nanasakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagium? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra, Piganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Dewey, Bureau, Brescia, 21 eyes. And number 16. Legislators Benton and Paduke, resolution authorizing the private sale of the veins of certain county owned lands acquired by reason of a failure to redeem said lands from a tax sale to Orange County pursuant to section 10184 of the real property tax law in Orange County amended law, local law number two of 2010. Discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stigenga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Fiero? And Brescia? 21 nights. Number 17. Legislator Benton, resolution providing for a public hearing on the proposed Orange County budget for the fiscal year 2019 social services district purposes and upon the assessment rolls of Orange County Sewer District Number 1, Orange County Small Watershed Protection District Number 1 for Carmeline Creek and Beaver Dam Lake District for such fiscal year pursuant to Section 271 and 359 of County Law and Section 4.06 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Tell them the time is October 18th. At yes. 5 p.m. At 5 p.m. At 5 o'clock. Thank you. Two we added. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Cheney? Edgeum? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 18. Legislators Cheney, Minuta, Benton, and Sutherland. Resolution to amend purpose of the supplemental appropriation to the Orange County Soil and Water Conservation District from the Orange County budget. Second. Discussion? Kulasek added. Lujan added. Tortel and Stagenga added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduke? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? 
Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Chewy, Vero, Brescia, 21 ice. Okay, number 19, bond resolution requiring two thirds vote. Bond resolution dated October 4th, 2018. Bond resolution of the County of Orange, New York, authorizing various improvements for Orange County Community College, stating the estimated total cost thereof is 1,435,000, appropriating said amount, therefore including 717,500 to be received from the New York State of New York and authorizing the issuance of $700,000 bonds of the county to pay the balance cost thereof. Oh, sorry. Just, as Joan added, Totel added, Lujan added, and Janet, I couldn't see her. Sorry, Janet. Peter Tui added as well. I got Saganga, didn't I? And Reskevich and Paduk, Sierra, Sassy. Okay. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Ben? Cheney? Fagiom? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan, Aye. Menuda, O'Donnell, Riskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, number 20, another bond resolution, supermajority. 21, okay, I'm out of step again. Okay, 21, sorry. Legislators Benton, Anita Stakis, O'Donnell, and Tortel. Resolution making supplemental appropriation to the 2018 county budget for the Valley View Center for Nursing Care and Rehabilitation pursuant to section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? With Lujan added, Stiganga added. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, Brescia. 21 eyes. Okay, 22 withdrawn, number 23. Legislator Minuta and Stiganga. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the county, Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion, Fagione added, Bureau added, Sutherland added, Tuttel, Tui, Sierra, Lujan, Paduk. Did you get all that? Okay. Better, it's easier to ask who, who doesn't want to be on, probably. <laughs> okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Nandestakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Siganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 24. Legislator Fagione and Vero, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Sheriff's Office to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Division of Homeland Security and Emergency Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Totel, Paduk, Stiganga, Tui, Lujan and Sutherland. Okay, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anagdostakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulasek? Lujan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? And Brescia? 21 eyes. Number 25. Legislator Lujan and Fagium. Resolution authorizing the Orange County Sheriff's Office to allocate revenue funds back into the Sheriff's operating budget pursuant to Section 4.10 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion? Fagione added. Totel added. Oh, you want to speak? Okay. Fagione's going to speak and Totel added. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. I just want to remind uh, all the fellow legislators, I hope you will support this. Um, and what this resolution provides is that the money that comes from the local school districts in which our sheriff's office provides 
public uh, school safety, that the money is then returned back into the, the operating budget for the Sheriff's Office. This is once again another example of the Orange County Sheriff's Office providing uh, life-saving and very important services to our county. So I ask that everyone uh, consider voting yes in this resolution. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Roll call. Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Menendez-Takis? Benton? Cheney? Reggione? Hines? Kulisek? Wuhan? Aye. Menuda? Odano? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Totem, Tui, Zero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 26. Legislators to Ganga and Minuta. Resolution authorizing county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services, Police Services, to accept and appropriate grant funds from the State of New York Governor's Traffic Safety Committee pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Any discussion? Paduk added, Lujan added, Sierra added, Tartel added, Vero added. Roll call. Nelly? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Lujan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga, Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, and Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 27. Legislator Lujan and Sierra. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Emergency Services to accept and appropriate grant funds from the United States Bureau of Justice Administration pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion? Added Bureau, Paduk, Stiganga, Totel, and other one. Roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Emo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Wuhan? Minuta? O'Donnell? Miskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland, Tortel, Tui, Vero, and Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, 28. Legislator Sutherland, Stiganga. Resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Mental Health to accept and appropriate funds from the New York State Office of Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Services pursuant to Section 99-H of the General Municipal Law and Section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Discussion, cool sec added. See so again, I mean the Tortel, Tui, Lujan, roll call. Benelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Ben? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Lujan? Aye. Minuta? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui, Vero, and Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, 29. Legislator Tui and Totel, resolution authorizing the county executive in conjunction with the Orange County Department of Health to appropriate fifth year budget period funds from the New York State Department of Health pursuant to section 99-H, the general municipal law and section 4.09 of the Orange County Charter. Second. Discussion, Lujan added, Stiganga added. Okay, roll call. Benelli. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anandastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Ulisek? Wuhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Riskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Tortel? Tui? Vero? And Brescia? 21 eyes. Okay, number 30. Legislators Anandastakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tui, Stiganga, Sierra, and Tortel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature designating October 2018 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month. All Republicans? Yes, okay. Yes, okay. All Democrats? And definitely Michael Amo as well? Okay. Roll call. For discussion? Roll call. Benelli? Yes. 
Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anilisakis, Benton, Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Wuhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Ruskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stigenga, Sutherland, Cotel, Tui, Hero, Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 31. Legislators in Agnostakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tui, Stiganga, Sierra, Totel. Resolution of the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 15, 2018 as White Cane Awareness Day. Second. The majority leader? Oh. Yes, he was able to be Minority leader, okay. And independence leader. All added. Okay, discussion? Roll call. Finelli? Yes. Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Agnostakis? Benton? Cheney, Fagione, Hines, Kulisek, Wuhan, Menuda, O'Donnell, Briskevich, Sassy, Sierra, Stiganga, Sutherland, Tautel, Tui, Vero, and Brescia, 21 eyes. Okay, number 32. Legislator Adnina Stakis, Amo, O'Donnell, Sutherland, Tui, Stiganga, Sierra, and Tautel. Resolution, the Orange County Legislature recognizing October 2018 as National Disability Employment Awareness Month. Second. Discussion? Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and Kulzek wants to talk? Legislator Kulzek. Yes, uh, those with disabilities can be productive in the workforce, and there's, there's 35 companies listed on this resolution that should be applauded for, for reaching out and hiring these, you know, they say disabilities, but it's the abilities that they're hired for, not the disabilities. So I'd just like to commend them, the 35 uh, companies that are listed here. Yes, thank you. I've, uh, uh, Commissioner Burpo is actively involved with that. I've gone to the dinner a couple times, once at Otter Kill and once at Summit Board, but it's really uh, heartwarming to see the companies and the individuals, and they're just so excited to be out in the workforce. And it's a great, great organization. Yes, Legislator. Hamo, yeah. I'd like to second, you know, with, uh, with just what Jim just said. Um, you know, it's kind of personal to me, my youngest brother is disabled, and, and for years, uh, had a hard time finding work because it was always the uh, the stigma that went with the disability and, and, and rather than the ability. And so I think it's, it's really time. And the only thing I'm concerned about is only 35 is such a small portion of Orange County employers. I wish we could find a lot more. Yeah, I think the list is going to grow as the word gets out there more and more. I know they do a good job in Sullivan County, too. Um, okay, roll call. Nelly? Paduk? Yes. Amo? Yes. Anadnastakis? Benton? Cheney? Fagione? Hines? Kulisek? Luhan? Menuda? O'Donnell? Ruskevich? Sassy? Sierra? Stiganga? Sutherland? Totel? Tui? Vero? Brescia? 21 eyes and the desk is clear. Okay, we have one speaker. I don't know. I can't see Animal. Is he still here? Yep, yep there you're hiding behind the camera. That's it. Okay, Animal Hughes regarding tree program. That's because I'm so thin. <laughs> All those bees, right? Thank you for recognizing me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I had spoke at a, a meeting prior to this about the prospect of looking at our 3,600 acres of open space, including the golf courses and uh, conservation easements, trails, and such. And I reached out to Commissioner Church, and I have spoken to some of the members here at present. And I'm going to leave this map with you which is self-explanatory. It tells you everything that we have, reservoirs, trailways, abandoned rail yards, and, and lots of things where municipalities partner in uh, operating some of these parks that we enjoy. Uh, on 3,600 acres, it's real easy to rack up 60,000 trees that are overmature that need to be taken down to remove the liability and take that lumber and put it to good use fuels, compost, wood chips and such. There'll be no waste and the program can be self-sufficient unto itself where it won't cost the county any money to do this and remove the liability that exists there. There's some awful trees out there. They're on roadways, they're on land that we own and maintain. And I've reached out to several of the legislators in this room. We've even taken a couple of tours and walks my own supervisor in the town of Newburgh and others. It's a slam dunk, it's a no-brainer. It needs to be taken care of before we end up with some bodies on the ground. The trees are over mature when they get so big. 
they're not worth anything if they hit the ground and split. If we harvest them specifically in an order where we can go after the worst ones first and eliminate the problem and the danger to the public, it would behoove us to take a good look at this thing. Also, around our reservoirs, we can plant grasses that don't need to be mowed and we can plant trees to stabilize the ground around the reservoirs and eliminate the costs of filtration for the municipality's plants. Uh, the DEC has programs called Trees for Tribs. There's no reason we couldn't partner with them and plant trees around the reservoirs and do a hands-free grooming around these reservoirs and eliminate the siltation problem that is created by the runoff. New York City DEP and their uh, hydro plants and all of the land that they own to support their systems issues. Deer permits to get rid of them because they munch up and get rid of all the vegetation. And when you get rid of the vegetation, you have buku amounts of siltation that's caused by the lack of stabilization. So let's get together and take a good look at this. I'm going to leave this map with you this evening. You can electronically copy that map. It's available through the county planning department. The map maker there has a copy of this is where I got this. And others of you have it here in this room already. Let's get together on this and get moving because there's a lot of stuff out there that's bad that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Thank you. The desk is clear. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All in favor? Carried.